everybody, my name is Mars, you can call me May or MG if you would like, and today I have for you my favorite video to film each month. This is my August wrap-up and September TBR, and I love filming my TBRs every month, it's always a great time, but September feels a little bit more special. I'm participating in two really cool readathons, the first one being the Summer Scare readathon. It is hosted by Jess over at the Hex Library and that runs from September 1st through 10th, and then the entire month will be Revelathon, which is my own readathon that I have made to celebrate the release of my book, Revelry in the Dark, which, if you're watching this video on the day that it comes out, releases today, so go buy your copy if you want one. If you don't, don't buy it, that's fine, but I have created a readathon to celebrate that, so I will link my announcement video and also Jess's down in the description for you to check out, and I will talk about my TBRs for those two readathons at the end of this video, but first we have to start with all of the books that I read in August, so let's get to that. So the first book that I finished in August was The Kings of Clonmel by John Flanagan. This is book eight in the Arrange Apprentice series, and being book eight, I feel like I can't really tell you what it's about, but this is a middle grade series that I loved growing up and have decided to reread, so I've been reading one book a month starting at the beginning of this year, so that's why August was book eight, and this series follows Will, who becomes apprenticed to the local ranger Halt, who's very much a mysterious figure. The rangers are kind of like the secret service of this fantasy country, and they just go on a bunch of adventures, and it's super cute and super fun, and I love it so much. Then I read Imaginations by William Carlos Williams, which I can't find my copy of, I have no idea where it went, but I'll be honest, I did kind of skim some of this. I found that while I love William Carlos Williams as a poet, the Red Wheelbarrow, one of the most iconic poetry lines in, as far as I can tell, ever, uh, but his prose just kind of isn't for me. It's just written in a way that I can't really wrap my head around, so while I did enjoy this, I don't think it was quite my style. After that, I read a bunch of ebooks, the first of which being The Visitor by K.A. Applegate. This is the second book in the Animorphs series, and I've decided I'm just going to slowly work my way through the whole thing. It'll probably take me years, considering there's 54 books, but I enjoyed this. I think I enjoyed the first one just a teeny tiny smidge more, but I'm still very much into the series, and I can't wait to see where the rest of the books take me. Then I read all five volumes of the manga Blackguard by Ryo Hanada. This is a dark sci-fi story with like an alien virus and kind of zombie-ish vibes, and it made me cry so hard. I absolutely adored this series, and Ryo Hanada is very easily one of my favorite mangakas. I've read their work Devil's Line before and also really liked that. So between that and Blackbird, I feel like I would read anything that they put out. Then I read Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. This is the first book in a historical fantasy trilogy. It takes place during the American Gold Rush and follows our main character Leah, who can sense gold in the earth. And I gave this a 7 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't anything spectacular, but I did have a fun time reading it, and I look forward to reading the other two books of the trilogy. Then I picked up some poetry and I read Please Don't Go Before I Get Better, a collection by Madison Kuhn, and I've actually read from this poet before. I own one of her collections physically. This collection I actually read as an audiobook, which I thought was really cool. I'm not super into audiobooks on their own. I usually like to listen to them while reading along physically, but I feel like with poetry it was a lot easier for me to retain what I was listening to because there wasn't some overcomplicated story arc to keep in mind, and it was just a fun time. Then I read Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. This was the Nostalgia Train book club pick for the month, and I loved this so, so, so much. It was so good, and I actually watched the movie after finishing it to really see the differences because boy does this diverge. And I just had a great time, and I think this is one of my favorite books now. It was so cute. After that, I picked up The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan, and I think this was like the third time I've read this in my life. And this time around, I don't think I liked it as much as I did when I was a teenager, 
I just feel like the characters were kind of flat and I would have loved to explore the, more, the world more than we did in this book. It was still an okay time, I give it a 6 out of 10, but I don't know if this is going to survive my next bookshelf purge whenever I do another big unhaul, but for now it can stay. Then we have a book that I actually started reading at the beginning of the month, but I was doing a little bit each day, and that is The Great Glowing Coils of the Universe. This is the second bind-up of Welcome to Night Vale episode transcripts. Welcome to Night Vale is a podcast that I've loved since high school, and every couple of years I want to get back into it, so I restart it, and this uh, collection brings you to, like, I think episode 50? So I was listening to an episode or two a day, Sometimes more than that, I think one day I listened to like five episodes in a row and reading along and there's little um, like commentary before each episode transcript from some of the writers and voice actors from the, so the show and it's just really cool and I really want to get my hands on the other two transcript volumes. Then I read The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Shiro, which I enjoyed. It's definitely not my favorite book from Rick Riordan in the Percy Jackson universe. It did fall flat in a couple of places, but overall it is Rick Riordan, and I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was cute, and I don't think there's that much else to say about it. Then we come to another book that I kind of ended up skimming, and that is Walden by Henry David Thoreau. This was very dry, and while there were bits and pieces that I liked for the most part, it just kind of felt meandering and definitely could have been condensed more and just wasn't really my style. Then I read Restless Slumber, which is book two in the Fortune of Sworn series by K.J. Sutton, and I really, really liked this. I feel like the first book was better. This one, some of the character arcs were kind of all over the place and I felt like needed to be streamlined more, but overall I am excited to read the rest of the series. Then I picked up a very chunky book and that is Ashwood and Brimstone by E.A. Olivieri and this was my members pick for the month, so I do have memberships over on Kofi and one of the perks is that you get an exclusive reading vlog that you get to vote on which book for my TBR I do for that vlog, and this is what my members picked. So if you want to know my thoughts on it, check out my Kofi and see if maybe my memberships are something you want to invest in. And finally, we have one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik, which I'm technically still reading. I have about 100 pages left. I plan on finishing it today and I just love this so much. It's already made me cry. Uh, if you are wondering if you've already read this, the chapter that made me cry is the one where they're in Beijing, and it's just so good. I adored the first two books in the series. I don't remember if the first one made me cry, but the second one definitely did, and now this one did. Uh, I just really love Naomi Novik's writing style, and I feel like I would read any of her books, so this is my last read of the month, and what a great one for it to be. And now that all of that is out of the way, we can get started on my TBR for September. So, the first step in figuring out my TBR is finding out how many card pulls I'm going to do. So I've got my D4 here, and we're going to give it a little bit of a roll. And I have a 2, I don't know if you can see that, but that means I have to re-roll and add the numbers. So, okay, I got another 2. So four total card pulls, pretty low, I'm okay with that. So let me grab my deck and we will see what the cards are. So here we have my cards, they're already shuffled, but let's split it anyway, just so you know that I'm not cheating or anything. And let's pull four cards. So the first one is the Four of Fiends. The second card is the Four of Dragons. Lots of fours today. Third card is the Druid, and the fourth and final card for September is the Four of Beasts. Wow, almost all fours. Um, I'm going to double check what these prompts are and pick some books, and I'll be back. So that was actually a lot easier than I expected it to be, and I'm very excited for all of these books, so let's talk about them. 
the first card I had pulled was the Four of Fiends, and the prompt this is a queer romance, which I will be fudging a little bit. So the book I've picked isn't strictly a romance, it's not really a romance involving the main character, but there are two side characters that are like very important to the book that partake in a queer romance, and the book is Eon by Alison Goodman. This is a book that I adored as a kid, and it's honestly probably one of the first books I've ever read with queer representation, and I found it at a thrift store a couple of weeks ago and had to buy it. It was like 99 cents, a definite steal, but I'm so excited to be returning to this book, and I'm definitely counting it as a queer romance because there's a romance between one of the characters is definitely queer. I don't know if you you could consider the other one queer, but maybe not. It doesn't matter. This is what I'm counting for this first card. Then we have the Four of Dragons, and this prompt is the tallest book on my physical TBR, and that is The House of Brides by Jane Cockrum. And I don't really know anything about this. I know it's like a mystery, and I bought this at the dollar store because it was a dollar, and I also just love the cover of it. So I'm excited to go into this kind of blind and just see how it goes. Our third card is the Druid, and there are two prompt options for this. The first being politics is a main theme, and the second being a translated book. And I'm gonna go with a translated book, and that is the Penguin Book of Women Poets. And this isn't completely translated, but this has poetry from female poets, from all sorts of countries and time periods, and a good chunk of them are translated into English, so I'm counting it even though it is fudging it a little bit. It's my game! I can fudge the rules whenever I want to. And the final card that we pulled was the Four of Beasts, and this prompt is an anthology or short story collection, and for that I'm going with After the King, Stories in Honor of J.R.R. Tolkien, and I have had this for several years. I think my boyfriend bought it for me once. And uh, it's been on at least one TBR, maybe two, but I have yet to read it. It's very thick and I, I just want to read it. I had a couple of other anthologies that I could have chosen from, but this one is the one that's really calling out to me. I've been wanting to do a Lord of the Rings reread, so maybe this will be a good, like, sequel, not sequel, prequel to that. So this is the fourth book on my TBR. Now that would be it, but if you remember, I said I'm taking part in two different readathons. So let's talk about the books that I'll be reading for those. So the first is the Summer Scare readathon, which has nine prompts and I've managed to find three books to fit all of them. The first two are ebooks. So we have Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark, and this fits most of the prompts, so it's a horror slash thriller, it's less than 200 pages, it is diverse, and it is out of my comfort zone, definitely. And I'm very nervous to read this, but also very excited to. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, but we will see. The other ebook is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, and this covers the prompts of a pumpkin on the cover, a spooky word in the title, and this will probably be my pick for reading a book only at night. I've never read an Agatha Christie book before, and I can't wait to read my first one. I'm very glad that the Perot books don't have to be read in order, because this is like book 42 in the series or something, and there's no way I could read 41 other books to get to this one. I just needed a book with a pumpkin on the cover, and this is one of the few that I could find that wasn't like a children's book. And then to cover the last two prompts, we have Magic by Angie Sage. So this is a middle grade and it also has demons, although they're not called demons in the book, they're called evil spirits, but I did ask Jess and she said that she'll allow it, so we're using it. This is also the Nostalgia Train book club pick for September, of which I am the co-conductor, so I will be helping Violet run the book club for the month. So if you want to read this along with us, definitely do and show up to the live stream. So I read this very long ago and cannot wait to return to it. And then for Revelathon, there are also nine prompts. One of them I technically won't be fulfilling because the prompt is to read Revelry in the Dark, which I've done about four times this year to edit, so I'm considering that covered even though I'm not going to be reading it in September. But I have two books that cover the rest of the prompts, so the first one is another ebook and that is These Violent Delights by Micah Nemerever. And this is a queer book, it is a dark academia, and it is a debut novel. 
the other book on my TBR for my own readathon is The Bone Houses, my favorite book of all time. I've read this the past two Septembers and I'm excited to read it again, and this time I think I'm going to annotate it. So, very excited for that, but it covers almost all of my prompts, which was accidental, but a very fun coincidence. This has disability rep, it is a book split into parts, it has mental health rep, autumn vibes, and there is a castle in it. So I'm so excited to be reading this book yet again. I adore it with my whole heart. And so for September, we have these six physical books plus three ebooks. And it kind of feels like a lot. Some of these books are very thick. We've got uh, After the King, which I think is going to take me a while to get through. And then uh, the ebooks, I think, are not super long. At least Ring Shout, I know, is quite short. The other two, I'm not sure about. But I am a little bit intimidated, but I don't think it's too much for me. Like, I think I can get through these. And I am actually very excited to read all of them. And now I'm going to put them down before my hands start to hurt. So that is all for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more content, and that way I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.